Hey, what's up, guys? Stay tuned for part one of our latest episode on the abomination of desolation today on the Last Things Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Damien, coming to you again with another banger of an episode of the Last Things Podcast, where we are on a journey to truth. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to come before you this, uh, I guess you could say, morning as we discuss the Word of God. Uh, last week, we, we are still covering the Antichrist. Last week, we talked about... Uh, the restrainer as to why the Antichrist is not taking over. You know, I made that statement and, uh, that I believe that the Antichrist is alive right now on earth today. I believe that with all my heart. And I knew you guys going to ask why, okay, if he's alive right now, why has he not taken over? So that's why I wanted to do an episode on the restrainer. As we saw in Thessalonian, I believe, what Paul talked about it. If you didn't catch it, Catch it on the last episode. Go back to the previous episode and then discuss and we uh, we go into detail about the identity of the restrainer. And we also look at some differences between uh, the Antichrist in Revelation chapter six and Jesus in Revelation chapter 19. So, man, go back and check out that episode, man. I, I, uh, it's got a lot of good information in there. So, uh, today, we're going to cover the abomination of desolation because I've been tap dancing around it because I wanted to wait till we got to Daniel to talk about it. But since we're discussing the Antichrist, this is a very uh, key event that is surrounded. That- Let's just say this is very important in his career, in his seven year career, which is what I call it. This is a very this is a defining moment. Let's say that that's a better phrase. This is a defining moment in his career. So I felt like, you know what? Let's just go ahead on and cover it now. And when we get to the end, when we finish uh, the book of Revelation, we'll go to Daniel. And if need be, we'll discuss it again. And maybe we'll bring in a uh, couple of other key points that uh, we might run across later on. So let's do this. Let's let's let Jesus talk to us about this event. So if you have your Bible, let's look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. And of course, I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. And and, and let me explain something to y'all. The reason why I use the New Living Translation when I do these episodes is because I feel like it's easier for people to understand. One thing that people always say when they are reading the Bible, when they read the King James, they say they can't understand it. It's a, it's hard to understand. First thing you need to do is pray before you read your Bible. And then second, if you have a hard time understanding King James, which is natural, pick another translation, but a good one. Uh, mine is New Living Translation. Uh, the Amplified is another is a, is another good one. The message is very good as well. But I like to read in New Living Translation so you guys can kind of understand more clearly and get you a parallel Bible. The the Bible that I have is a parallel edition. It has the King James on one side of the page and then it has the New Living Translation on the other side. So maybe that will help you as well. Get you a parallel edition. Get you one with King James and one with whatever your other translation would be, whether mine is NLT, yours could be Amplified. There's some people who like the NIV, you know, hey, it is what it is. It's, uh, you know, the message is another one that I like as well. So try that out and see if that might help you. But I'm reading this in a New Living Translation, so don't be a little different, okay? Let's look at Matthew 24, verse 15. This is what it says. 
The time will come when you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about, the sacrilegious object that causes desecration, standing in the holy place. Now, of course, first thing you see, this is written in red. So this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, um, Daniel spoke about an event that Jesus said, when you see this happen, it's going to happen. And he said, when you see it, and then he, go, and then he, goes, um, he goes further in verse 16, then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person outside the house must not go inside the pack. A person in the field must not return even to get a coat. He said, when you see this event take place, you split. Get out of Dodge. Don't go back for anything. Get your stuff and get to going and get there quickly. He told him, flee to the hills. He gave him a specific place to go to. He said, go in this direction when you see this happen. So for us, Jesus said, spoken of by, look what he said. He said, spoke, you will see what Daniel the prophet spoke about. Now, First thing what we're going to do is to understand it. So we need to go back to Daniel. Now, Daniel spoke about it in a couple of different places. But the first one, we're going to start at Daniel chapter nine, verse 27. And let me throw this key, uh, throw this little nugget out there. A lot of scholars believe Daniel did not write the book of Daniel. I don't know why, but they believe that Daniel did not write Daniel. Now. We, of course, know that that's not true. We know Daniel wrote Daniel. How do we know that? Because Jesus said so himself. He said, when you see what Daniel the prophet spoke about. So what does he mean? So what's he saying? He's confirming two things. One, Daniel wrote the book of Daniel. Daniel wrote his own book. And two, the most important thing, Daniel is a prophet. Jesus just confirmed two key pieces of information. Daniel wrote Daniel and Daniel is a prophet. So now that we know that Daniel is a prophet, let's go to Daniel to see what he said about this event, right? So we are at Daniel chapter nine, verse 27. And this is what it says. The ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one of seven. But after half this time, he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings. And as a climax to all his terrible deeds, he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes des desecration. I'm sorry. Until the fake decree for this defiler is finally poured out on him. This is what Daniel said about the abomination of desolation. This is what he said. This is uh, what's going to happen. Now, let's look at Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, to see. He talks about it again. Uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. This is what it says. From the time the daily sacrifices stop and the sacrilegious object that causes desecration is set up to be worshipped, there will be 1,290 days. And blessed are those who wait and remain until the end of the 1,335 days. Now, here, this is New Living Translation. Here, when it says 1,290 days, I need y'all to understand the American calendar is very different from the Hebrew calendar, right? This is going by the Hebrew calendar. So this is three and a half years. The 1,290 days is three and a half years. Now, look what Daniel said. He said, blessed are those who wait and remain until the end of the 1,335 days. Now, I, if if my math is right, that might be another. Forty five, that's 45 days after the three and a half years. 
what happens in that 45 days, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I honestly don't know. But he said, blessed are those who hold out. He said, 45 days after the three and a half years is up, blessed are those that hold out. So we don't know what, maybe that's when Jesus actually returns. Uh, we don't know. But he said, you, they'll be blessed if they hold out to that day. So that's very important. Now, that's where we see it in Daniel. Now, Mark talks about it as well. It's in Mark chapter 13, verse 14. This is what it says. The time will come when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing where it should not be. Then look at what he says. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person outside the house must not go back in the house to pack. A person in the field must not return to even get a coat. He ain't like he said in Matthew. He said, when you see this happen, y'all run. Don't go back for nothing. Don't turn back for nothing. Get your stuff and get to stepping. Like Martin said, get to stepping. That's what he told him. He said, get going and get going fast. Okay. So let's do this. I um, defined abomination. This is the definition that I found. A thing that causes disgust or hatred. Desolation is uh, defined as devastation or ruin. That's what I found, uh, definition. So when you hear abomination of desolation, it's two words, like antichrist, two words put together as one. That's what this is two words put together as, uh, as a phrase to describe this event that Daniel spoke of. Now, why is it called the abomination of desolation? It's called that because there have been, there was another abomination of desolation. It took place, um, excuse me, I, I think if I'm reading this right, this happened 200 years before Jesus spoke about it in Matthew 24. Now, the now what happened is Antiochus the uh, fourth. He took the title Theo, Theos Epiphany, Epiphanes. I think it, it means manifest God or God manifest. And what he did is he set up an altar to Zeus over the altar of the burnt offering, and he sacrificed a pig on the altar. He also slaughtered a great number of Jews, selling others into slavery, and issued degrees for, decrees forbidding circumcision and required Jews to sacrifice to pagan gods and eat pig meat. This, would, this is the first abomination of desolation. So when Daniel speaks of it, he's talking about an event similar a future event is what Daniel's talking about, but he's using this event that happened to describe the next one that's going to take place. He said that this is what this is what he talked about. This is the first one. This is the very first one that he was speaking of. Now, when it comes to the abomination of desolation, it it basically, as we know, it's the Antichrist will make a covenant with Israel, a seven-year covenant with Israel. Now, in the middle of that covenant, according to Daniel, in the middle of that covenant, three and a half years into it, what will happen is he will go into the temple and he will go into the holiest of place in the temple, which is the Holy of Holies. It's a, it's a little room that's inside that you, I, if memory serves me correctly, I think you can only go in there one time out of the year and you had to, and only a priest could go in there. There was no one else who could go. He was the only one who could go. So what he does is he goes in and he sets up a, a object of desecration, some kind of, some kind of object uh, for himself for everybody to worship. And he says that he is God. He will proclaim himself to be God. It's at this moment. This is where the Bible says you will know who the Antichrist is when this event takes place. He is the Antichrist. 
So this is how we'll know the identity. That's why I say this event is very important because you will know his identity. You will not have to guess who he is, who he might be. You won't have to do that anymore. He, when this event takes place, you'll know his identity because that's what he's going to do. Okay. So now that's the first one with Antic. Antic. I can't pronounce his name. That's the first one with the guy. And Anti. Antiochus, I don't know, Lord, guys, forgive me, I'm probably butchering his name, but that's the first one. So that's where Daniel um, this, um, Daniel picks up the title, Abomination of Desolation, from this one, okay? Now, because this talks about temples, we need to talk about the, the temples. Now, the first temple was built by Solomon. Remember, if you go back in your Bible in the Old Testament, uh, David wanted to build an altar for God. He wanted to build something for God. But God told him, he said, no, you have too much blood on your hands. I'll let your son build this temple for me instead. So Solomon built the first temple. So Solomon built that first temple. Now, the temple was destroyed in 587-586 BC by Nebuchadnezzar II, who exiled the Judeans to Babylon after the fall of the kingdom of Judea. And if you have your Bible, read 2 Chronicles 36, verse 17 through 21. This speaks about the, uh, the first temple that was destroyed, Solomon's temple being destroyed. This is where it is in Scripture. So that's the first temple. Now, the second temple, if you read 2 Chronicle 36, uh, chapter 36, verse 22 through 23, and then it picks up in Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, it talks about how the king of Cyrus, the king of the king of Persia, I think is he Persian? I can't. Anyway, it talks about how Cyrus. He goes in and he tells the people, hey, I'm paraphrasing and reading your study time. He tells the people, hey, God has appointed me to let you guys go. And he appointed me to rebuild the temple. And anyone who wants to help in that, you guys are free to go. So that's what happened. After the exile, Cyrus releases the remaining remnant of the people and sends them back to where they will begin to rebuild the temple. Now, however, Cyrus dies before the temple is rebuilt. So years later, they this temple, it, they went through four, three different kingdoms, I believe. They went through three different kingdoms until they got to Herod. Herod decided to get, make, get this temple rebuilt. And that's what he did. And when he rebuilt the temple, he did a couple of additions to the temple. To, so for whatever reason, I can't remember. It was something to do with it. I can't remember what it was, but he did some additions to the temple for himself. He kind of added a little more to it. So that's the second temple. That's the second temple. Now, the second temple was destroyed in 70 AD, which is what everyone calls the fall of Jerusalem. That's when the second temple was destroyed in 70 AD, right? Okay, now that we've talked about the first temple and we talked about the second temple, why am I talking about these temples? Because, the in, because in the end times, the third temple, there's gonna be a third temple that's supposed to be built. Now, that's very key because as we know in Israel, you got the Jews and then you got the Muslims, you got so many different people around. The, on, the only way that this temple will be rebuilt is if there's some kind of peace. That's what Daniel talked about, a, a peace treaty, a, a covenant. And then the temple will be rebuilt. Once the, not rebuilt, but built again, but built. This, the, this is the third temple. Once that third temple is built, of course, they're gonna have sacrifices and everything just as the others did. Now, once this third temple is built, three and a half years into it, 
the Antichrist will go into the holiest part, the Holy of Holies. He'll set up an altar and he'll proclaim himself to be God. And that's, and that's in essence, the abomination of desolation. And then what the event. And then, like Jesus said, when you see this happen, run as quickly as possible. And this takes place in the middle of the three and a half years. So when this happens, the second half of the seven year uh, tribulation, which is what people call it, the tribulation period, the second half of it, the three and a half years, that's called the great tribulation. That first three and a half, it's hard. Excuse me. The first three and a half years is hard, but it's nothing like the second half of the tribulation. That last three and a half years is far worse than the first three and a half. That's why they, they call the second half the three and a half years. So that's the uh, history of those temples. So I wanted to discuss that with the first temple and the second temple. Now, I need to show you something. I'm going to mess with some of y'all's theology in a few minutes, okay? I need to show y'all something about the abomination. Let, let, me, let me put this out there. There are, there's a, there's a uh, people, there's, there's a study um, that says, the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD is the abomination of desolation that Daniel spoke about in Daniel chapter that we saw in Daniel. They say that, that a lot of people believe that that's the abomination of desolation. So they feel like that has already taken place. Now, there's another group of people who say that's not the, that has not happened yet. The abomination of desolation is a future event that has, that has to take place. This is not current. This is something future. This, this has not happened yet. This is future down the road. So I'm going to present something to you, and it's your opinion as to what, which category you fall under. Do you believe um, do you believe this is a future event or do you believe this is an event that has already taken place with the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD? OK, so you're going to have to decide which one. All right. Now, in order to do this, I want to look at Matthew 24. Now, I got my Bible. I, I, I got my Bible in front of me. And I have my computer in front of me as well. So in order to see this, you're, we're gonna, you're gonna have to do kind of what I'm doing right now. You're going to need two Bibles in front of you. You're gonna need two Bibles in front of you. So I'm trying to set this up right now. And is it ready? Is it ready? Okay, perfect. Now. I have my Bible open in Matthew 24. My laptop is right here open to Luke 21. Now, I want to show you something. Now, a lot of the older um, people, a lot of older, a lot of people who are more well versed in scripture than me probably already seen this. And there's some who probably have never seen this. So I'm going to do my best to kind of show you. At some point, we're going to do an episode on Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. But I'm not going to go too in-depth with all of it because I want to show you in Scripture what I'm talking about, okay? Okay, so let's see if I can break this down. So I need you to look at Matthew 24, which is, uh, which is in front and Luke 21. I'm going to show you something of how people assume that people say that the abomination of desolation took place in 70 AD. Okay. And I think this is where they get it from. I think this is where they're getting it from because they're trying to take Luke 21 and Matthew 24 and kind of put them together as saying they're both saying the same thing. Right. But I'm getting ready to show you Matthew 24 and Luke 21, 
do not talk, they have some similarities, but they got a bunch of differences as well. The whole, the meat of the conversations in both chapters are not the same. They're talking about two different things, okay? So um, I wanna show you. Let's first look at, let me get my little notes in front of me. All right, now I want you to look at Matthew 24, verse one. Uh, look at this, verse one and two. As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds, his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings. But he told them, do you see all these buildings? I assure you, there will be so, they will be, will be, I'm sorry, so completely demolished that not one stone will be left on top of another, okay? That's what Jesus said in Matthew. This is Matthew 24, verse one and two. Now, Luke, we need to scroll down. Now I got Luke 21, verse one. While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. Verse three, I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them, for they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. Verse five, here we go. Some of the disciples began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the walls. But Jesus said, the time is coming for when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. I want you guys to notice something about this. If we look at Matthew 24, verse 1, what does it say? As Jesus was leaving the temple grounds. Verse three says this, later, Jesus sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to, well, let's, let me stop right there. So we see Jesus is leaving the temple in Matthew 24. And later on the slopes of the Mount of Olives. So he was at the temple. He was leaving the temple. Now he's at the out. He's at the Mount of Olives, right? If you look at Luke twenty-one, verse one, what does it say? While Jesus was where in the temple. Now look at verse three. Verse three says some of his disciples began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the walls. But Jesus said the time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Right. That's verse six. Right. Now. Do you notice something? Now, first of all, when Jesus is speaking about the uh, various temples, he's talking about the temple's destruction. Remember that second temple that I talked about, Herod's temple? That, that's the temple that Jesus is talking about. The, 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 the fall of Jerusalem has not happened yet. It hasn't happened. This is what Jesus is talking about. He, he's, he's talking to them about the temple's destruction, which was destroyed in the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. This is what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about the temple, the second temple that I tell you, the uh, temple that Herod, Herod's temple, which is what it's called. This is the temple that Jesus is talking about, right? I need you to notice something. In Matthew, he was leaving the temple and now he's at the Mount of Olives. If you look at Luke, it don't mention nothing about Jesus being at the Mount of Olives. When Luke, when it's speaking in Luke, it says he's in the temple. So what's the first thing we notice about these two? The locations of both of them. Matthew's account, they're at the Mount of Olives. Luke's account, they're in the temple. Okay, so you see that. That's the first point. Their, their locations are a little off. Their locations are different. Now, let's look at verse four. Um, look at let's let's read the rest of it. 
We're back in Matthew 24, verse three. Later, Jesus sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and asked, when will all this take place? And will there be any sign ahead of time to signal your return and the end of the world? That's what Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse three, right? Now, look at verse seven. Teacher, they asked, when will all this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to take place? Now, do you see the questions that are being asked? In Matthew, the question asked, will there be any sign? They went to him privately. When will all this take place? And will there be any sign ahead of time to signal your return and the end of the world? But in Luke, he says, what sign will show us that these things are about to take place? Now, there at the Mount of Olives in Matthew, the disciples are asking about the end of the world, right? They're asking about his return and the end of the world. Luke's account, when Jesus said, talked about the, about the temple being destroyed, what, is, what do they say? When will all this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to take place, right? Okay, so you see two different conversations, right? In Matthew, he, he, the disciples asked him about his return and the end of the world. In Luke, they're asking about the temple being destroyed, right? Now, I need you to Let's read. We're going to do a little reading right now because I'm trying to show it in scripture. Verse four. Don't let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name saying I am the Messiah. They will lead many astray and wars will break out near and far. But don't panic. Yes, these things must come, but the end won't follow immediately. The nations and kingdoms will proclaim war against each other, and there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all of this will be only the beginning of the horrors to come. In the King James, it's called the beginning of sorrows, right? Now, look at verse 9. What does it say? Then you will be arrested persecuted and killed. You will be hated all over the world because of your allegiance to me. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will lead people astray. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. As you keep reading, G Jesus continues. He's talking about the end, right? Now, here's the kicker. You ready? Here's the mess, here's the mess with your theology part. Hey, what's up, guys? Stay tuned for part two on our latest episode, The Abomination of Desolation, next week on the Last Things Podcast.